Good afternoon, and welcome to Lifelong Learners. I'm your talk show host, Terrence Perry, and we have a great show for you today. I'm looking uh, forward to getting right into this show. Uh, and my special guest today is Krista Bodie Smith, and she's the, uh, the founder, she's the founder of the Capital City Hope Foundation. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring on in just a minute, but before I do, I want to introduce my producer, Amnon. Hello, Terrence. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? I am doing just fine, and you know I'm happy, but, but, I'm, but, but, but we'll let that go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we want to jump right into the show. I want to uh, bring Krista on. Krista, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself, sir? Well, I'm great. I'm glad to. I'm glad to have you. And I want to get into um, your foundation uh, uh, today. Your foundation, the Capital City uh, Hope Foundation. Tell us a little bit about a, a, a little bit about your background and a little bit about the Capital City. Uh, how uh, the Capital City Hope Foundation came came into existence. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here today. Capital City Hope Foundation is a nonprofit organization that started when a uh, few people went through a few fatalities and uh, individuals had some hardship and my heart was heavy and I wanted to find a way to kind of meet the needs of the people and bring them back to a productive state. So I went to the co-founder, uh, Denise Hopton, and we discussed this and uh, we had a vision, and the vision was to stir people up, instill hope, and save lives. And so everything that we do is contingent upon doing those three things, stirring people up, instilling hope, and saving lives. So when did you all start, start, the, uh, start the foundation? This foundation was started back in 2012. Uh, it came about when a young man I knew was killed and I was shocked when I saw it on the news and it really did get to me and I wanted to find a way to help his family and that's what really started this whole thing not to mention all the things that I have been through with my family and all the losses that I have with my family and I just knew that people needed hope people are going through every day in life and they are putting on a happy face and acting like everything is okay but deep down inside they have the things that they need to deal with and they need that light to shine again and that's what we try to do. Krista, that, now, that brings me to a point uh, because I, I I know that you wrote a book either last year or earlier this year. Yes. And that book surprised me. It was called Final Wishes. That's correct. Um, when you wrote that book. But what inspired, and I guess from what you just said about the, the, uh, the deaths and passings in your uh, in your family and in, 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 in some of the community around you. Um, but I wanted to know for sure, is that what inspired you to, to write that book? And tell us a, a little bit about how, how Best Wishes came, uh, uh, came about. Well, Final Wishes... A Final trans Wishes, I'm sorry. Yes, Final Wishes, a transition from life to death. That book came about because of all the... The, the challenges I faced in trying to be an executive of the state, in trying to be a coordinator for funerals and just have to do all those things, uh, you know, the health proxy and to be all those people that you have to be. Uh, when my brother made that call to me and I had the responsibility that fell on me in 2008 and I had to go through everything I needed to do for the people in the hospital and answer all those questions and I could not find the answers and I had to go back and try to gather that information. That is when I knew that people needed to really begin to organize things for their loved ones. Uh, I knew that people were not prepared, that somehow people needed to, excuse me, that's my phone. When you're a business person, your phone never stops ringing, <laughs> but I'm cutting it off now. So, um, I knew that people needed to really take in consideration what their family members are going to have to go through after they pass on. I knew that people needed to take in consideration the choices that will have to be made if you are sick and you are on your deathbed, uh, at such as DNRs and things like that. I also knew that it is a very, very hard decision to make and it takes a toll on an individual. And I felt like writing this book, I spelled out some things to people to let them know 
that you need to really make it easy on your loved ones and plan it out for them so that they do not have to not only mourn you, but now be frantic about making choices when you can just spell it out for them and make it a little bit easier. Okay. That, um, let me ask, can, can you tell people how they can get that book um, and if it's available through, I guess, like Amazon um, in any of the, like, Barnes & Nobles, how can they get their book? Yes. Okay. So I am Crystal Bodie Smith, and I have a website. It's www.iamcrystalbodysmith.com. You can also Google Final Wishes, A Transition from Life to Death. You can find it on Facebook. You can find it on my website. You can find it on Create Space. You can find it on Amazon. The book is available uh, as a printed version. It's available through Kindle. And I also do workshops. I do workshops with insurance agents. And we come in and we discuss uh, the different ways people need to get covered. Because it's not just about insurance for life. We talk about insurance across the board. I talk about, see, this goes back to the hope thing. I talk about being covered and being prepared in every aspect. And that means health insurance. That means renter's insurance. That means car insurance. That just means life in general. So uh, we go into all of that. But, yes, the book is available if they search Final Wishes or they search by my name, Crystal Bodie Smith, or Hope Catalyst. It'll all come up. All right. So um, the the book Final Wishes, um, they can go to your, your website and get the book. But also you mentioned that you, 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 you partner with um, – Insurance agents insurance and other agencies. people, mm-hmm. and and you and you talk about the book. It's like a a a, a, a workshop. Yes. Then to the where you um, are, are talking about the the chapters that's that's in the book. Yes. Doing, we what we do workshops. is we do a free insurance workshop. We uh-huh. bring in people to actually get people to think about their situation, to think about getting covered. You know, there's a lot of people out here that go through unforeseen deaths and unforeseen sicknesses and they are they're making it day to day and they are not getting insurance you know there's a lot of people that work on a job and they elect not to get the insurance that the company is offering because they think it's too much and they don't want that taken out of their check there are people who have their own businesses and they don't have insurance because it's too much and then there's people who just don't have insurance for whatever the reason is and so we just go into the importance of having insurance. We look at what each individual uh, household income is and look at a way to let them see how they can afford insurance, especially for an infant. Sometimes that's 2 and $3. So we just try to show them what they can sacrifice to make sure they have this coverage so they can have peace of mind and hope. At the end of the day, it's giving their family hope because they are going to be covered when any situation comes up. They are not going to be left with the bills. They're not going to be left with variation. They're not going to be left with making a choice. See, Terrence, it is hard when you have to decide to pull a plug on a human being. You understand what I'm saying? A, a person yeah. like your mom or your dad or your sister or brother is sick, and the doctor comes in and says there's nothing else we can do. It is not an easy choice to make to have to decide and go to others and say, man, they wanted to pull the plug. But on the other hand, If you go to the family and say, mom or dad or sister and brother did not want to be on this machine and they asked us not to let them be on the machine, it becomes easy because now you are honoring their wishes. And that's what I mean by final wishes. You are just honoring the wishes that were laid out and it's so much easier and now you're not the bad guy. Uh, Man, that that makes makes good sense and just a good... I mean, it's a good practice period for um, particular us to have in place um, because a lot of time, and, 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 and we've seen in the past couple of years right here in the, uh, in the Raleigh area, there, there has been um, shootings, there's been deaths, uh, and, and I know you are part of the Justice Serve uh, movement with Dino Power uh, as well as myself, and we've seen a lot of, uh, 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 I'm going to say young men, women that are gunned down in the community and there's there's no no arrangements 
no monies in place to bury those individuals. And we've had to, um, you know, to raise money to, to, to make that happen. But that goes back t to your point. You know, that's a preparation that we have to take responsibility for, you know, because it is at that time, I mean, you know, that's a grieving time and it's hard on the family to have to. To, to come, come up, up with funds. But here's the thing. Fund. They have this thing on the Internet called GoFund. GoFund me. I say, without being disrespectful to anybody in any form or fashion, but I say, go fund yourself. Get a policy. Sacrifice not getting your hair done one month. Sacrifice not going out or not doing something and spend somewhere between 5 to $20 a month and put it on a policy in case something happens. Not only does it pay for the insurance, it pays for the bills, and it gives your people peace of mind. Now, here's the other thing. We have a lot of young parents, True. teenage parents, they're not thinking about insurance, so I try to target them. I actually gave away my first ship in the book. I gave them all away. That's how much I just wanted people to have the information. And inside the book, there is a, a workbook where you fill it out and you answer the question and then you put information. It's kind of like a keepsake. So not only does it tell you how to go through and answer all the right questions, but it also has a place inside the book, inside the book, where you can just write down the name of your policy, the the actual information, and you can actually write a note to your loved one. You can write a note to the loved one to say, I know if you're reading this book that something happened to me and I'm sorry, but I believe in you and I know you can do this and here's what I need you to do. I have a page where it spells out who to contact if you're a business owner. Okay, contact Terrence Perry. He has this information. If you contact Crystal Smith, she can give you the keys to the account. It, just, it, it gives you direction so people are not left frantic and trying to figure everything out because like i said when i was in that position and i had to go find information it wasn't easy and i didn't want nobody else to ever have to go through that and the book is not even ten dollars it's not even ten dollars but people choose what they want to spend insurance sometimes is under ten dollars and people choose not to get it and i really want people to just be more responsible and more sympathetic and more concerned about your loved ones after the fact, leave them with a peaceful state of mind and get them that information and get them covered with insurance. All right. Uh, let me also just just let the audience uh, and the viewers know that they can call into the show um, if they got questions for uh, Crystal, um, if they want to you know, ask questions, if they have opinions or concerns, call into the show at 919 Five one eight nine seven seven three, uh, and call into uh, the chat room, and, and 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 talk with us. Let us know what your opinions are. Uh, and Crystal, I'm gonna kind of segue from your mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, the book Final Wishes too. Okay. You was on the cover of the was it the Diamond, Diamond Magazine? Diamond Diva Magazine, yes, uh, sir. Uh, you was on the you was on the front cover. Uh, what was that all about? How did you um, and that process? Well, you know what? Just like I'm here today. Terrence, you know, I'm just an average person, an average New York girl, you know, uh, just trying to make it, just have ambitions, just maintaining and striving to reach my goals. And what I try to do is if there is an opportunity for me to shine a light and give someone encouragement, that was a story that I did on um, Are You Hopeful or Hopeless? And to the ladies, to the ladies that are in business. And I... I just, I've been through a lot of things, and I think a lot of us have been through a lot, and I think that if we take our trials and our testimony and we tell it, we can help somebody else along the way, and that's all that was. Just trying to help somebody else, just trying to encourage somebody else, just trying to let somebody else know, I've been where you are, and it's going to be okay. Don't give up. Don't give in. Press on. You can do it. It might not look good right now, but there is sunshine on the other side. Just don't get weary in well doing, and that's all I'll be trying to do, you know. And I and I'm a living example, and I try. Like I look like this today in my jeans and my hat because literally I had a lot going on today, and I started to go back and put on a business suit. But you know what? That's what's wrong. Everybody always putting on something. They always putting on a 
a face. They're putting on a suit. I, I sometimes like to just be me. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm not going back. I'm not changing. I'm going just like I am. Because we need to realize that we are everyday people with everyday situations. And we can make it regardless of what trials and tribulations we've been through. We just got to tap into our hope. And we just got to be hopeful and believe that it's going to be okay. And always be optimistic. Amen. I saw you, Crystal. Um, I saw you. I don't know whether it was live streaming, uh, but you was you you was 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 counseling a a a, a friend of ours, Robert Michener, and, mm-hmm. and you all were talking, and he and he was sharing that he had went through um, a, a domestic, domestic violence, violence situation, yes. and, and and you were kind of uh, counseling him through uh, that conversation. How did that come about? Uh, well, because and he's he, the he, yeah, yeah he, uh, 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 he's the CEO of uh, Our Youth Matters. Yes, and I work with them on that, and it's interesting you said that because when we go to talk about things coming up, I mm-hmm. will tell you about something happening this weekend with Our Youth Matters and the Sheriff Department, and an opportunity for youth in the area. See, there again, I try to connect with people so we can bring opportunities and positive events, positive messages to people. And uh, how they came about, well, he was just telling me about his situation, and it was Domestic Violence Month. And what he said was he wanted to share his story because men don't normally tell it, and men are normally not the ones that are victim. In this case, he was the victim. It's usually the woman that's the victim, and he wanted it to be known that there are some men that go through, and he's not ashamed. He want he wants to help men come out, and I commended him because... Everything he'd been through, he did not put his hand on that woman at one time. And so I thought that was really, really something powerful. So it came out because he knew that I did go live. He knew that I do speak out to the public. And he wanted it to get he wanted it to be publicized. He wants to help other men and he wants people to know that uh domestic violence is something that men go through too. And so I helped him to do that. Yeah, when I saw that 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 moved me because I've known him for a long time, but I never knew um, in all our passings that he had been going through a, a, a domestic violence situation. I know when I last saw him, I knew he was going through a, um, a divorce, but I didn't know it, it was to that extent. That that's And you never know a lot of times what someone is really going through. There um, you go. Because we would were, were run into each other all the time. And, you know, uh, he was always w- working with the youth and doing our youth matters, and you wouldn't know. Because he had a, you know, he had a smile on his face, and he he looked. I mean, he 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 worked with the uh, sheriff department, um, so you never know what a person is, is is going through. But I saw you talking to him and kind of uh, letting him get that out, and I was um, I, I was a surprise, but at the same time, happy that y'all both could take that time to bring that situation, you know, to the forefront and share it with the uh, the, the public. I think that was commendable on both y'all's parts. Just like you said, to get that out there. But he was able to talk to you, n- knowing that you're a person that, you know, that he could talk to. Yeah, sometimes I do a lot of that talking. <laughs> People probably like, Lord, there she go again. But you know what? The message is don't hold back. Tell somebody if you're going through something. And you said a very vital thing. People do smile on the outside, but on the inside, they're going through something. So I was happy to be able to get it out for him. And that's what I'm all about. I try to do my live messages and do these things like this interview with you today and the magazine stories because I'm hoping that I stir someone up enough that if they are hiding something, if they are holding something in, that they will go and seek the help they need to do what they need to do to be encouraged, to get stirred up, to go live their dreams and try again and not be suppressed and not regret, and that's what my mission is, and that's why I say keep hope alive, and that's why I say I'm trying to stir up the gift, instill hope, and save lives. Amnon, you have a question? I, I have two comments. Okay. But you said there is a light at the end, Yes. and there is hope. There isn't, unless you do something. Because you can't expect people to just sit back and say, oh, well, Crystal said there's light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just going to 
sit back, smoke cigarettes, and everything is going to be okay. Right. That's not what you mean, right? No, sir. Right. You're, you're absolutely right. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So you definitely have to do something. You have to, number one, you have to make a decision. That's the first thing. Back it up. You have to accept that there's a problem first. You have to recognize that there's an issue. Once you do that and you identify it, then you make a choice. You make a conscious choice. And once you make that conscious choice, then you move on that choice and you decide what you're going to do. And a lot of times that choice has to do with being around positive people, not being around people who uh, hold you back and, and, and maybe hold you down and make you feel bad about what you're doing and make you feel bad about where you've been, the mistakes you made. Because there's going to be people who do that, okay? We all know that. People who act like they never did nothing wrong, but we all know they've been there, done that. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you believe in yourself. And if you believe in yourself, if you endorse yourself, it won't matter what anybody else does. And that's where the hope comes from. It comes from in here. The hope comes from inside, you know, because I talk about hope because not everybody believes in a higher power. Not everybody prays and has faith. And I understand that. And I have the ultimate amount of faith. I mean, God is my source. He's all our source, but everybody doesn't recognize that. So you got to have something, you know, so that's, that's true. The other thing is you started saying something about this weekend and the sheriff and kids. Yes. And you, the yes. event coming up the weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to wait until you you oh. all asked me about something coming up. But yes, sir. One of the things we do is we partner with different organizations. And this weekend, our youth matters. Mr. Robert Mitchell is the founder, and Angela Mitch. I'm sorry, Angela Moore is the executive director. So we have a harvest fest, and uh, there are people that are involved, like RT Studios. They're coming out. They're doing some things, and. There's going to be a fashion show. The sheriff department is coming out, and there's going to be a runner man challenge, and I think we might incorporate the mannequin challenge. So it's going to be exciting. The children are going to do a fashion show. It's a day party. It's the end of the year bash for our youth matters, and it's going to take place in Durham. And it's another opportunity for children to come together. They're going to be workshop. So they got workshop, fashion show, music, entertainment, food, and it's a safe environment, you know. And then we have the unity with the police force and the children. Can you tell people where to go in Durham or where to find yeah, information? Yeah, if, if, if it's or... okay for me to look oh, down. Oh. Uh, I may have to. Uh, it's actually on. I cut my phone off. But it's taking place in Durham. I tell you what you do. If you look me up, if you go to my page, if you look up Crystal Bodie Smith, and you follow me, or if you follow Our Youth Matters, if you go to Facebook and you look up Our Youth Matters, and then you will see it on the event page, it will say Harvest Fest this Saturday. And the other thing is we are also registering people for our talent showcase, which is taking place in February, and we're doing that in Wilson. So come on out, register for the showcase, get involved with the Running Man Challenge, with the Sheriff Department, which builds camaraderie with the police force and the youth. Watch the fashion show. Have a good time. Parents, get your children involved with Our Youth Matters. Mr. Robert Mishner is doing it just because he knows that children need an outlet, and it's a wonderful organization. All right. Let me ask you, too. Now, who is, um, is it Artis Studios? Yes. Uh, and... I saw a little bit about you and in, in, involved with RT Studios and as a magazine. Yes, sir. There's Ooh. another. I actually had a story in there about my Touch by Cancer event that I did last month. It was an event because all the losses that I had, all the losses I have had, excuse me, came from cancer. My mom, my dad, and my brother all passed away with cancer. My sister is in remission right now. I am cancer-free. Thank you, Jesus. So I did a cancer awareness event, and he covered it. And so that story was in the September issue of the magazine. And um, actually, I think I have that magazine. And it is awesome. It is an awesome, awesome magazine. Colorful. Diamond Diva is another powerful magazine okay. with a uh, shout out to Salida, Renee Dawkins. These people are doing some wonderful things. You're doing something wonderful. I just shout out all of you who give us opportunities to showcase what we do. And then you highlight us in the magazines and these TV shows because you're giving us hope. And you're helping us to do what we do. And we're working together. See, that's yeah. what I like. People helping people. 
and knowing that there's enough out here for all of us. There's no reason to be competitive. Just help each other because our gift is going to make room for us anyhow. Amen. You were also, well, I saw pictures of you with, I've seen pictures of you with Michelle Obama, uh, <laughs> and I saw pictures of you with Hillary Clinton uh, over the past uh, month or so. Where were, were, was that at the events that they were in in North Carolina in recent, uh, I guess in the recent month? Uh, well, it's funny you would say that. <laughs> you know, people hire me to promote and to kind of be in certain places to promote their events or to make connections for them. I am who I am. I am crystalbodysmith.com. I'm bold. I know who I belong to, and I know how to get in those doors I need to get into. And if you need to get into a door and you need help, I can help you get there. So, yes, you may have seen me in a lot of places, and you will see me in more because many people want me to go there for them to cover the story. It's almost like a reporter. Uh, I'm a people person, so I like to go, and I like to get the information back to people. I like to talk to people, and I like to get a positive message out. I'm tired of seeing all this negativity, so I try to be in place to get the positive message out that will inspire someone, and that's my purpose. Let me ask you now, is that your production Is that the Ambience Production Yes, company? sir. That was the company that I had 30 years ago, oh. Ambience Production World, in conjunction with my partner who passed away, and Angela Moore actually did some things with us, too, Yes, and we did that from the entertainment perspective. Uh, worked in conjunction, had recognition from the governor of, you know, North Carolina, and did some things with the schools and entertainers and artists. And that is why just about everything I do, I incorporate entertainment because I love entertainment and promotion. My passion is people, entertainment, and promotion, and spreading hope. So I kind of put them all together in a package and try to make it all work together. Yeah, because you was also at a at a uh, at the comedy club in um, in Clay, North Carolina recently yeah, with, this with weekend. some of the uh, mm -hmm. Marcel mm -hmm. Anderson and was uh, Sean and Mr. Police Officer Jay Durrell and uh, Marshall Blackman. Um, I went with her, and she's a comedian from Deaf Comedy Jam. So we have Jazz Account, Jazz Com, excuse me, coming up, and we're just scoping some things out. And uh, I'm also looking to help Miss. Wanda Short, you know, uh, we go back from Cheryl's Cosmetology, who also is very supportive whenever I do events. Uh, I work with them closely. So, again, it's about working together, guys. You know, I'm about working together. I'm about, you know, just spreading hope and being real and us just kind of like working together to do what we need to do. I don't like that backbiting and, you know, hating and all that stuff. I don't have time for that. You know, I just like positivity. I don't have room for anything else, and I just like to get it done. And if anybody needs me to help them get it done, I try to help them. If they don't, I keep it moving. All right. But, Crystal, let me ask you. I got one other question I want to try to get in before we, we leave. That was also your involvement with, um, it's called Butterflies in Heaven, Authors oh, yes. and Arts. Uh, can, what was that? that like and what was that inspired Ooh, by wow uh, that was touching for me right. that kind of just that came from me following my footsteps that god just ordered you know young lady tara Hen henry owns that uh art space and she's doing a wonderful job at letting people use it for different events and i happened to have her on my heart and i was going to go by and she went live you know, live video opened up a lot of doors for people. She went live, and I saw them there, and I just happened to be two lights down. So I went by, and when I went by, that event was going on, and the rest was history. And Myra Bradley came by, and uh, some of us had all been recipients of the 100 Women in White. I was the recipient the previous year, and Sharon was the recipient this year. So she kind of knew a little bit about what I did. I guess she saw it on Facebook and she heard about it. So we all just began to connect and share. Everybody started giving each other hope because everybody there had lost someone. And it was just so powerful to come together with a group of people who wanted to lift each other up, encourage each other. And we have some more things that's going to take place. Uh, we, we, we thought about doing some things together. So 
This is what I mean, people. If you are out there doing something positive, get with some other positive people. We are powerful when we work together. Powerful when we work together. We just learned that lesson recently, so we need to take heed and take that across the board in every aspect. We can do mighty things together. All right. And now, Krista, again, I want you to just kind of let people know how they can get your book and how they can get, get in touch with you through social media, um, any other links that they, you do have the website, but just let people know how to get in touch with you, how to get your book, uh, and any event that may be going on in a community that they may need your assistance with, how they can get in contact with you. Well, I'll say this once again, and I appreciate the opportunity. Both of you have definitely afforded me today. My website is IamCrystalBodiesmith.com. You can follow me on Facebook, CrystalBodiesmith.com. You can Google me. I'm on Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, just about every Snapchat, Periscope, anywhere you look, either Crystal Bodie Smith or Shout Crystal. And my email, if you'd like to email me, is shoutcrystal at gmail.com. Just like you shout hallelujah, well, you can shout crystal <laughs> at gmail.com. And you can certainly give me a call at 919-395-0433. Once again, that's 919 919- Three nine five zero four nine three, and if you need some assistance or if you just need some hope if you just need some inspiration <laughs> if you just need some encouragement or you need somebody to be on the scene to promote you I'm the girl <laughs> oh wow all right Crystal listen I want to thank you for coming on I also want to just extend the courtesy of any time that you 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 know you do want to come back on the show feel free to you know to just come on, share what you got going on. Um, any others that's involved in the, uh, a community and uplifting a community through hope, passion, and uh, inspiration, you know, ask them to come on the show and, 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 and let's talk about it. Again, I appreciate you coming on. I've known you since we actually went to, um, to St. Augustine University together years ago, uh, and you still had that, that inspiration, the spirit then. You still got it now. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank the audience for uh, for tuning in every Tuesday. Continue to tune in with us every Tuesday at 2. I want to thank you all and have a great evening, everybody. Peace out. Keep hoping. Keep, keep. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Current Affairs with Omnon Nissan, And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.